the promotion tonight is purely a boxing promotion, but behind it is the Peacock Gymnasium, which um, started 1978 in a, an old, a disused room in a school in Drew Road in Silvertown. Um, we started there, got a few bits of equipment given to us by different people. Um, anyone was welcome, it cost them 50p to come in. Uh, and if they never had no money, they could put their UB, at the time, UB40s were everywhere, they could put their UB40 in the jar rather than their 50p. Um, we used to pay £10 a week, I think it was, for the room. And it just built on. People give us more equipment, we got more adventurous with it, entered events, we ended up in an amateur club, that, like loads of young kids there, and it continued to grow. I believe there was an impact on the community by the fact that the kids had somewhere to go, of all ages. And we'd have had kids, 11, 11, 12 year olds kids there, maybe some even younger. And then we'd have had 40, 50 year old adults there, all using the same area. Martin, um, tell us about the things that you have to do to train boxers for a fight. But on one hand, tonight you've got somebody doing a pro debut. Yes. And then on the other hand, you've got somebody doing a championship fight and, you know, a serious contender for even greater things. So how does that affect you as a trainer? It doesn't really affect me as a trainer, but it affects the boys as the way they train. Obviously, Mickey's is a more endurance fight, so he's obviously got to spar longer rounds, do longer runs. And Alfie's just coming over from the amateurs where everything's about speed and speed. And I've got to sort of slow Alfie down to match the uh, pro ranks, which is a different sort of game. It's more of a without being rude to any of the amateurs out there, it's more of a man sport and it's more, it's, it's more deliberate. So tell me, what is your experience leading up to pro debut? Uh, it's just everything, it's just been a graph that's been actually from the pros to the amateurs, it's, un it's unbelievable, so, so much hard work, dedication, everything. But you've actually fought at international level, haven't yeah. you? I've, um, I was unbeaten for England. I won four nation championships and everything, but nothing compares to building up to this fight. So, what does a pro debut mean to you? Well, really, that's, that's not that's another fight, really. But I've never ever fought without a head guard, never. And I think that that's more not worried about, but that's what I'm more concerned about. Because I know I can fight. I know I can box. That's just having the head guard. That's just completely different. So you're going up against an experienced opponent? Um, he's, had, he's had one and lost it. So he's been there, done it before me, so he's more experienced than me at the minute. So yeah, I, I would say so. And what's your ambition for boxing? World champion. Without a doubt. Now, there's no protection, is there, for, um, shall we say, the pro rate for, for the pro boxing? Well, the protection they wear is a gum shield and obviously a box which protects the lower regions. But uh, in the amateurs, I think they wear head guards, don't they? They wear red guards, yes, they do wear red guards. And obviously the pros, when they spar, most pros wear uh, head guards. So what um, preparation have you done with uh, young um, Alfie, for example? Young Alfie, I've just spent a lot of time in the gym. Just, you know, we've just worked on a few shots and basically sitting down a little bit more on his punches, even though he's quite heavy-handed anyway. Um, just getting to know him, what he's like, what his temperament's like, you know, what, again, he sounds a little bit off, but what turns him on and what, what doesn't, you know, how he ticks, you know, what his good days, what his bad days, what his strong points, what his weak points, what can I actually get him to focus on during the fight and love the sparring. Obviously when he spars, we sort of like, you know, I'm looking to see how he reacts to certain things, what he's good at and what he's bad at. I've been boxing for like since I was 10 really. Uh, I had a 50 amateur fights, done, done fairly well in them. And um, I've, I've come up here, a fella called Rocky Dean introduced me up here to Martin Bowers. He was willing to train me in that. And uh, I went professional with Dean Powell. It's what I've wanted to do all the time. And uh, I just feel like it's, it's my time, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it.
my brother also a boxer, he won the ABAs and things like that. He, he was up here the other day, if he's, he's just said like he's just been a dad, and he, he was wondering, think, thinking of doing it as well, like when he gets time and things like that. So thinking about your pro debut fight, what's that uh, like? Um, I'm very looking forward to it, can't wait, can't wait. It's um, on the 14th at the Grand City Hotel and um, I'm buzzing for it. Okay. How does your training change for a pro uh, debut fight? Uh, it's, it's all different, it's more intense, it's a lot harder and it's, you've got to be a pro 24-7, you've got to watch what you eat, you, it's, you've got to think about boxing when you sleep, you've got to think about it as soon as you wake up, boxing's on your brain all the time. And what's your ambition? My ambition is to get as far as I can get. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in it for the money, I just I want to win titles. How do you see Alfie's career developing? Well, for Alfie's career, I see it developing along the lines of like we'll get him like four rounders, we'll see how he progresses and how he reacts to that, and we'll move on to six rounders, and hopefully get him eight rounders, and then try and get him along to championship level, which will probably be about three years down the line. So there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of time to be spent in the gym and then, like I said, a lot of time to be spent together learning each other's routines and you know, basically what make people tick. That's, that's the essence of training. Forty wins should be a very, very good kid. I've seen him. He trains alongside me and my stable at Martin's Peacock Gym. Seen him sparring on a regular basis. He's very, very, very powerful for the weight. Quite awkward. Uh, he's boxing a very awkward boy in Mark McRae. He's, he's been a pro for uh, just over a year, I believe. Mark McRae. He's fought some good kids. He's had a couple of wins himself, and it should be a very, very interesting fight. This one. What do you reckon the, the trainer saying to Alfie now? What's the, what's the standard for? He, he's basically going to be telling him to keep things nice and tight, keep his hands high, keep his guard high. Just take your time, go out there, have a feel out in the first round, feel how strong the other guy is. You know, just basically keep things nice and tight, stay nice and calm, take your time, relax, and go out there and do your stuff. And wearing the black strip, all black strip, he weighed in today at 10 tone six and one quarter pound. So Mark McRae's last fight was against Carl Johansson, who was the ex-British champion, uh, a super featherweight, a real, real good fighter. Um, he got knocked out in the sixth round, McRae, but up until that point, he gave Johansson as much as he could handle. Uh, it was a real good performance, and I was very, very impressed with Mark McRae. He's a strong lad. He's going to come to fight. He's not going to lie down. This is a tough debut for Alfie Smith. I wouldn't like to be in his shoes myself at the moment, to be honest. And the eye contact at the start, this is always quite a big thing, isn't it? The guys keep an eye contact with each other. Yeah, uh, some fighters do, some fighters don't. Some some fighters don't like to make eye contact at all. I, I personally prefer a fighter that does make eye contact. You can tell a lot about your opponent from looking them directly in the eye. You can see how much they're going to be up for it, whether they really want to come to fight or not. But we'll see this here. Hopefully Alfie takes his time. Good start there from McRae, good body shots. So he's a, he's a southpaw, Alfie, so he's going to be looking to snap that right hand lead out. Throw the big left hand over the top and come back with a lead right hook. That's, that's the punch he's going to be looking for tonight, is the right hook. Got many tweets coming through. I've got a couple coming through, yeah. Whitey 106. Come back to the tweets after the action. Looks like it's hotting up. It's a stumble there and Smith touched down. I'm not sure whether it was a punch or not that caused it, but as I say, McRae's a tough, tough, tough lad. It's a, it's a tough debut for him. So far, he's given him all the trouble that he can handle. Smith looks like, to me, he needs to get a little bit busier, start letting his hands go a little bit more. At the moment, he's just waiting, McRae's doing his work and he's just not letting his hands go himself. So he needs to get a little bit busier, start doing a bit more work himself. Oh, 
busy there, but nice tight defence from McRae. Didn't look troubled by that at all. So that's the one, Smith, when he gets backed up there, when he gets backed up to the ropes, he's going to be looking to roll his head under and to the right-hand side. Back with his own right hook to try and catch. Very troubled by that McRae at the moment. He's looking to hold on. Again, two very powerful global weights. Those blows to the head, are they really disorientating when it happens or not really? Uh, not really, to be honest with you. They're running on so much adrenaline at the moment. They certainly don't, they really, you know, unless you get hit right on the end of the nose, you really don't feel them while you're in there, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, the body shots are the most painful ones. They really do knock the air out of you. They, they, they hurt when they sink in, they hurt. Hence why that's what Smith was just going for. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's a little bit short while it's going to be easier for him to swing down underneath the face punches oh. and land body shots there. Again, another tight first round here. Very tight. It's, it's hard to split them, to be honest with you. McRae started the better. I think, again, probably Smith finished the round for stronger. I would give Smith the first one. Fantastic. This boy from Cambridge, you know, this selfie Smith making his fight debut. Sometimes you can tell an actor when he walks on stage he has something. This guy walked on stage once again to a fantastic uh, introduction music. I know it's a bit show busy, but uh, he, he had something about him. Also, he's a good looking boy and people like good looking boys. And if he does well, uh, he, have a lot, he have a big fan base. And I think that he certainly won the first round. What do you think, Frank? Yeah, as I say, again, I mean, I thought McRae started the round the better. Uh, he looked a bit busier. Smith took his time to settle in, which is understandable, bearing in mind it's the first round of his pro debut. He looked a little bit tentative at times, a little bit nervous about letting his hands go, but certainly settled in, and he definitely won the last half of the round. I, I would say that he won the first. Yeah, he did win the first. And Elf is a good-looking boy, and you Stand must up, like him, Natalie. You like the look of him? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I love it, it's half-naked, it's brilliant. But no, I mean, boxing-wise, he was he's amazing. He really got stuck in at the end there, it was fantastic. Let's see what round two holds. Yes. Again, good start there from McRae, some good work to the body, three or four punch combination that he just let go. Didn't seem to bother Smith too much, but it's about work rate again. I mean, Smith's just not doing anything. I like to see a boxer take their time, but you know, he, needs to, he needs to work just a little bit harder, if you ask me. This is Smith. This is Smith, yeah. Yeah, he's just from the outside there, he's just looking for a single shot. He's not really getting into range. It's as though he's just happy to, to coast the first half of the round and work the last half of the round. And that's not going to do him any good with winning the rounds. Well, you know, I mean, provided he's not taking too many shots, he's, he's not going to lose the rounds there. But I'd like to see him work for the whole three minutes, really. I mean, it's, as, as we say, as a young lad, um, don't give this McRae a chance to get into the fight. Just go and impose right, okay. yourself on him. Don't let him get into the fight. So it's just not working enough there. McRae's coming back into the fight now, which is unfortunate. Good shot, good shot, good straight there. He's uh, getting back into the fight, McRae, so uh, Smith really have to, has to look after himself, and he's got to step it up a bit, as Frank says. He's got to work the whole round. Absolutely, some good action going on there. It's a cracking overhand left, followed by a right hook from a Smith. Seems to just buckle, buckle McRae's legs for just a fraction of a second there. The side train with Alfie. He's a powerful lad. He really does sink those shots in. Very troubled at the moment, McRae. Very troubled. Looking to fire back, which is always a good sign. But he needs to take his time there a little bit, Smith. Just take his time, pick his shots, but he's got to throw twos and threes rather than one single shot. He needs to throw two and three punches at a time. I don't think you're going to trouble a tough lad like McRae with a single shot unless it's an absolute peach. This is a real tear-up. I mean, two great fights you've had so far. This is a real tear-up now. And this round is very, very important because at the moment it's even Stevens. And uh, McRae is intending to um, maybe getting on top here. So, some good work there from McRae, but nice tight defence from Smith. Didn't, didn't seem to bother by it, to be honest with you. So, that's an absolutely cracking shot. Absolute cracking shot. And another straight left hand. Good shot. 
right hook, spun off, changed the angle on him. McRae tried to counter and miss. Good work by Smith there. Again, I mean, he shouldn't really be sitting on the ropes there. He had room to slide out to the side. He could have just slid off, not let McRae do any work at all. I'd rather see fighters hit, then move off to the side, don't get hit. You know, it's, it's okay having a good defense, but sooner or later, some of these shots get through, and that's when fighters get cut and stopped. Another good lead right hook there from Smith. But again, they're, they're single shots. If he tried to put two and three of them together, if he landed two or three of them, he could possibly get McRae out of here. But the single mean? shots are not, are not... They're not as effective. Not, not at all, no, no. Jess, what well, are your views that, on that, that round? That was a great round. I mean, it had everything. It had drama and uh, two young boxers there fighting for their life, really. Uh, I don't know how to, I mean, that, I, I think that was pretty even Stevens. What do you think, Frank? Was that pretty even Stevens? Yeah, again, I mean, I think, I think Smith started the round a little bit slowly. To me, uh, work rate rise, it was probably pretty even, but I think the better quality work possibly came from Smith. The cleaner shots was landed by Smith. So, so we, we think two up for Smith. Yeah, for, for me, I would edge it towards Smith. But, yeah, yeah. you know, there, there's a case for McRae. He, he clearly won the first part of the round when Smith wasn't working. So, you know, there's a case for it, but in my professional opinion, I'd, I'd edge to Walter Smith just for the better quality work, as I say. It was single and shot. in my unprofessional oh, opinion, I agree with you. Thank you very much. And in your professional opinion, what do you think the, the future is for Smith? It could be anything, to be honest with you. It depends on how well he lives a life, whether he eats right, stays off the alcohol, stays away from cigarettes and women and, you know, all sorts Everything of distractions. Like something like that, yeah, something like that. But, yeah. So we've got round three now. How do you think this one's going to go? Again, I'll, I'll see it following a pretty similar pattern, to be honest with you. Um, I think there's a little slight cut there for, for McRae say, over his first, right high. Again, Smith just seems to, con seems to be content to let him work there, which I, I, I don't think is, you know, it's not a good idea. He's going to let McRae build his confidence and think that he's back in this fight. Smith should be getting on the front foot, pushing him back, pushing McRae back to the ropes and working away to the body, switching up, throwing to the body, then the head, bringing his hands down, throwing two or three shots at a time. I, mean, I, I am extremely impressed with the work that Smith's doing. He's, he really he looks sharp, he looks snappy, he looks powerful, but just a little bit lazy at times. Again, there, just waiting for just a little bit too long. To me there, McRae looks tired. McRae's not now working. So for that reason, this is when Smith should be doing the three. That's when he should be pushing. That's when he should be pushing back yeah. there. You know we're close enough here to get the sweat. I'll lean in and give him a shout. Again, that's where he needs to be getting on the front foot there. Not single jabs. Twos and threes. Lead left, coming back with the hooks. Throwing the body shots. I mean, it's good work, as I say, I'm impressed with him, but he could have done better in my opinion. What are your views there, Jess? Well, I, you know, I'm thinking this this boy McRae is, is a, a nice fighter also. I mean, he's he's giving his all in there, and uh, it's still a bit even, Stevens. Anything can happen. I mean, we, we could get a knockout in this fight as well because they're taking heavy punishment from both of them. Again, another single shot there from Smith. Well, that's the thing, Smith is looking really on top form and McRae's starting to look much more tired. So is that what you're saying? He should just go in for it? Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't want to throw all pulse into the wind. You don't just want to open up, but you just want to be a little bit busy. And when it's clear that you've got your opponent tired, he doesn't look exhausted, but he's definitely... McRae's work rate has definitely slowed down. And that's where Smith just needs to be a little bit busier, maybe a touch more aggressive. Doesn't want to get loose, doesn't want to leave his chin out to dry, so the other guys can tag him on it. But just a little bit busier there. I mean, to me, Smith doesn't look like he's struggling at all fitness-wise. A couple of little blows there, which are expected after three tough rounds. But he needs to get on the front foot, push McRae back, do some work, and then step off him and go and take a break for himself, rather than just being in there looking to throw single shots. And for me, it was a clear Smith round. Smith, three up for me. You know, McRae needs a knockout to win the fight, which it doesn't look like he's going to get. But, yeah, good performance. But McRae certainly dangerous for the first couple.
Well, Natalie, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a difficult, uh, difficult round to call that. I mean, uh, both fighters had their moments, and uh, I, uh, I really don't know. I mean, as I say, I, one of them could get knocked out because they're both landing uh, heavy punches and they're rocking all over the place. Uh, it's a great second fight. I think this evening we've had two great fights and uh, great entertainment. Um, I don't know what Frank thinks now. As uh, I mean, are we are we all evens, or uh, do we think that? Uh, again, I mean, for, for me, for me, I've got Alfie Smith three rounds up. I think he's won the first three. The first two was a bit tight. First one was probably the tightest one. Second, you know, again, I, I think Smith edged it. The last round he clearly won for me. So for me, he's three up. I think McCray needs a knockout to win the fight. Yeah. I do, it doesn't look to me as though he'll get it. But uh, uh, again, in this last round, there's three minutes left. I'd like to see Smith. Not get reckless, but just work a little bit harder. Throws his shots in combinations. Good defence there. Turned it well. Good footwork. You say work hard. I think he's working hard enough for me. I mean, from a professional point of view, obviously you're right, but my goodness, they really are having a go in there tonight. Yeah, they've, they've a fantastic fight. They've certainly stepped up the uh, the pace at the start of this round. Uh, it'll probably die down there a little bit after that little burst there. Yeah, they've yeah, both yeah. done a bit of work, so they'll slow down and have a little breather. Bit of a lazy jab there from Smith. Needs to really pump that out and keep McCray away from him. If he's going to throw single shots, you need to be very precise and very snappy with them. If you get lazy, you're open for counters over the top. Good hook there from McCray. Again, see for me, it's Smith's laziness there that's allowing McCray to work. When he's in front of him and he's stalking him and he's got his back to the rope. McCray's not doing anything right now, look. As soon as Smith lets McCray get onto the front foot, McCray starts to work. So they're good jabs, but he really needs to follow him up with the left hand, the hook, body shots. Again, another good single jab. Good shot. Now they're two good left hands. Lovely lead hook. But again, you see where the attack there is slightly disjointed. That's where he needs to throw him in combination. Bang, bang, bang. I think, you know, for a debut, again, I'm fairly impressed with him. He's looked good. He's done some good work. Um, he'll learn from it. I mean, all these early fights are a learning experience. He'll learn from it. I, I am impressed with him. I don't want to sound like I'm being overly critical. Um, you know, as I say, it was a very tough opponent for a first fight. McRae's a tough lad. He's fit. He's strong. We well, can see all the muscles coming out now when he's in that Absolutely. In that Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're both in good shape. They're both, they're, both, they're both, you know, they're both young. They're both strong. They're both fit. You know, they've, they've, they've both give a good account of themselves. As I say, I'm fairly impressed with Smith, but... Just a few more combinations, and I think he could have possibly even got McRae out of there tonight. Looks like when he throws that lead left, that lead backhand, Smith, when he throws a straight left. He really turns his hips and shoulders. The shot. A lot of leverage in the shot. It's a good shot. Good bout there, but Smith, 40-36. He won all four rounds as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure Martin there will be absolutely overwhelmed. He'll be, he'll be very, very pleased for Smith in the corner there, Martin. Be overwhelmed. So what do you think, Jess? Like well, young lad's first well, debut. Well, uh, absolutely. He's the debut fight. Handsome boy. Have a big following in boxing. Alfie Smith. Uh, in fact, I think that fight was probably better than the first fight. It was action all the way. It was nip and tuck. And, uh, you know, uh, from a fight fan myself, I really couldn't really tell who was on top. Frank said uh, that no, he won every round, and obviously he did. But it was uh, from a, 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 a fan's point of view, it looked, it looked very close. But I agree, Elfie did win. That really was a great bout, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was, it was let's say for a debut, it was fairly evenly matched. Let's see what the referee's given it. Mark McRae, 37, and Alfie Smith, the winner, Bolton. 
Yeah, he's given three rounds to Smith and one round even. So it would have probably been the first round that was the even round. And then he gave Smith the last three rounds. I've won, you know, the Southern Area title, the prize fighter, um, and also the Commonwealth title. Um, soon to win it again. Um, I've been boxing since I was 11 years old. Um, boxed for England as an amateur. We travelled all around Europe and stuff, uh, various different uh, competitions. Um, then I turned pro in 2005. So I've been a pro now for coming on six years. Um, just, lo just love the sport. Um, always wanted to do it from a young age. And um, it's just where my passion is. Tell us about the fight tonight here at uh, the Mayfair Millennium Hotel in Grosvenor Square. Well, it's a fight I've been looking forward to now. I've been, I've been out of action now for 13 months, you know, um, for you know, various different reasons. Um, I just can't wait to get in there. It's just, just going to. I just want to see, you know, see what's changed in me. You know, I could get in there and could have a little bit of rust I need to shake off. Um, or I could be in there, it could be fine. So. And what's your ambition in the, in the heavyweight division? My ambition is to just go to the top all the way. You know, like I said, my, my, my main achievement so far is win, winning the Commonwealth title. Um, just going to go on and hopefully win European titles and world titles. Wish you every success. Thank you. Unfortunately, with the heavyweights, you never know what's going to happen. Or fortunately, depending on what your preference is. As I say, Zayas is very experienced. 63 fights, 62 fights all around Europe. Um, boxed anywhere and everywhere. Been over boxed in this country before. Been in with some good, some good, good fighters. Uh, Alexander Kovalavi. Um, Jeff Kelp, Frank Maney, the, the former European cruiserweight champion. He's been in with some good fighters. And the prize fighter champion in the year of the QRA. Please welcome to the ring from Norwich, Sam Sexton. Six for three minute round of boxing and your referee is Mr. Turner. They're with heavyweight because these guys are bigger. Do they get tired quicker? Um, yeah, it depends on their style of fighting. I mean, you certainly won't see the jumping around and the bouncing about. Um, it'll be a lot slower, you know, literally just because they're bigger. They can't physically drag their frames around like the light boys do. Um, you know, there's certain, Sexton's certainly got good footwork. He's got the ability to bounce about, but for him to do that for four rounds, six rounds, six four rounds, four rounds, four rounds, it's just not physically possible. Very few big men can do stuff like that, you know. But as I say, I mean, he's, he's nimble enough on his feet for a big guy. Good start from Sexton there. He's going to... Look to keep poking that jab out, keep the other guy on the outside. Good lead hooks there, double lead hook. Zayas just doesn't look too faced at the moment, to be perfectly honest with you. He's got a nice tight defence there, but he doesn't look too faced. He looks like he's coming to have a go. that Sexton's got this one in the bag or do you reckon it's going to be a Well, as I say, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm expecting him to win. I'm expecting him to win. Let's make no bones about it. It's, uh, it's his first fight back. It's not going to be too dangerous. He's not going to be in there against someone who potentially is going to stop him. But, um, you know, it should be a good workout for him. They're, they're basically going to be looking to get a few rounds under their belt now. Um, because he's had such a long time out, Sexton. He's going to want to go and, he's going to want to go and do four or six rounds, you know. Um, just get a bit of work out there. Just feel comfortable. Uh, get back to doing what he does best. Good work there from Sexton, finishing off with a jab again, which is always nice. To me, Sexton just looks content to coast along at the minute. He knows he's comfortably winning the rounds. He just wants to get a couple of rounds under the belt. You know, um, Zayasus really isn't offering much resistance at the moment. He's got a tight defence and he's having the occasional pot shot. Two to three there like he did, but 
you know, to me, at any time, really, Sexton could get on the front foot and pretty much get this guy out of there, really. But it's like a walk in the park for Sexton, really. He's just sort of... Yeah, it is, yeah. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty safe match. But it, that's to be expected after being out for so long and coming off a defeat last time out. So, you know, as I say, it's just literally like a one game match. That's what this fight is for, really. But as I say, I mean, he's took a few decent shots. I says he doesn't look too unfazed by it at the moment. Screw shot followed by the jab. Nice one too. Yeah, sex, Sexton's round all the way for me. Isn't this a great night on SportsFace.tv? Uh, I think that Sam Sexton's too big, uh, too heavy, too experienced for this this other guy whose name I can't pronounce. But I have to say, uh, he's showing a, a lot of courage, the other fighter, and uh, it looks as if he's going to be very difficult to get rid of because. Uh, he has a lot of resolve and he hasn't been moved yet and he's taken some really big shots. Yeah, I totally agree with that, just as I say. I mean, experience-wise, the, the other guy is sort of leagues above Sam, but boxing's all about levels, you know. It's uh, level skill-wise, talent-wise, Sam's obviously a better fighter, but as I say, it's a nice, safe match for him. He's coming yeah, yeah, back yeah. after 13 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's to be expected, really. In boxing, in boxing, it's a safe match for him. But you never know in boxing, you know, you, you can pop a, a, a lucky punch and go down. But I think, as you say, it's a safe fight for him. It's nice for Sam Sexton to get back and have a, have, a, have a good workout fight. Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll see whether Sexton ups the work rate this time, whether he feels comfortable enough to let his hands go a little bit more. He should do. I mean, to say, he's, he, he's levels above this guy, to be honest. Good shot. Nice work there from Sexton. Good variety there. Body, head, body. But again, as I say, Zayas has come back. I mean, it's not, it's not really a lot of quality in his work, but he's letting his hands go. He doesn't look too phased by it. Um, you know, looks like. Looks like a tough guy. Looks like a tough guy. Nice tight defence. I mean, in fairness to him, he is blocking a lot of these shots on his gloves. He's got a nice tight guard. He's blocking a lot on his arms and gloves. A few jabs from Sexton are getting through, but it's you know he's he's not really stepping forward with it. He's not putting too much pop behind it. He's just content to keep Zayas at arm's length. pretty much I mean he's levels above the other guy the other yeah, guy yeah. he's gonna have the occasional pot shot just to try and stay in it just to yeah. try and stay competitive but you know it's all Sexton yeah, I mean I'd, yeah. I'd like to see maybe a touch more variety from Sexton maybe a few more body shots a few upper cuts when Zayas covers up like he does there you know just to mix it up a bit yeah just to mix it up a bit give him something different to think about he, when he gets put under pressure on the ropes there Zayas he goes into a crouch the head comes forward Sexton should be looking to bring the shots up the middle the upper cuts up the middle when he just crouches forward like that yeah. you know Sexton's just content to just keep popping 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 the straight shots the jam the straight right hand throwing the occasional body shot in there but you know maybe a little bit more variety so because you know Zayasas could get lucky with one of these pot shots in a minute and land Sexton right on the chin and you know it could be good night I doubt it very much but as we say with the heavyweights you just don't know you never know I mean, if I was if I was in Sexton's corner, I, I would be I would be saying to him, "Come on, Sam. You know, we need to get this guy out of here now. Your levels above him. Up the work rate. You know, get him out of there. Let's have a nice early night." Get in bed with a cup of tea. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I think he probably uh, would have more chance of doing that if he went downstairs a bit. 
He's been going for the head most of the fight, and the guy's got good defense. Uh, I think perhaps, you know, down in the body would, uh, would, uh, would be the way of maybe getting rid of him, but he's showing a lot of resolve. But as you say, at the moment, it's a good safe fight for Sam Sexton and a good workout for him. Yeah, totally agree with you there, Jesse. He, he's, you know, he's getting a little bit one-dimensional, Sexton. It's just the straight shots, just a jab, 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 right hand, jab, 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 jab right hand. And the other guy, as I say, he's, he's blocking a lot of that on his gloves and arms, yeah. taking them high on the forehead, which, you know, you're not really going to trouble someone. It's the toughest part of the skull. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Sexton does need a little bit more variety there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well picked up. But the opponent, uh, opponent is showing a lot of bottom, as we say. Oh, definitely, definitely. As I say, they, these guys, he's had 62 fights, he's been a pro since 2006. Um, I'm looking at his record here, he's been to Poland, he's been to Italy, to Lithuania, to Latvia, to Ireland, to England. Uh, he's, he's literally been all over the place. I think he's what been you to call a journey, man, a bit of a journey. Yeah, man. absolutely, yeah. yeah he's, he's, been, been, he's been fighting so long, I was in the charts when he started. I don't think he's been fighting that long, yet. Ah! Oh, nice man. <laughs> But yeah, these these guys are really tough, you know. They they, they, they don't do what they do. They're, they're they're virtually professional opponents. They come here to take the, the home fighters a few rounds. That's what they do, they're, they're, and they're very professional. Right here. This guy, as we say, looks like a tough guy. Not a lot of resistance, you know. Not a lot of shots coming back from him. Um, but taking taking sex on the rounds. So it'll be interesting to see if Sexton's Good right hand there. trainers told him what you were just saying, you know, lay in there, go for it. Yeah, again, I mean, he started this round with a little bit more intent. He's let the right hand go a few times and he started, started to, to land a few more clean shots, you know. Good footwork there from Sexton. Now, that's a bit more like it again. I'm saying like the previous fight there, twos and threes. Once you start to throw your punches in combinations, you'll... Especially if you target the body, you'll pull the elbows down, you'll we'll leave a bit more room for, for the head to come in. So you want to the body, and then come back with the head um, He's well on top now, and it's, it's getting slightly uncomfortable to watch, although uh, the boy's still fighting back. Uh, the good thing about it is that we we've we've seen no blood, and I, and, I, and I mean that in a nice way, you know. To, to see somebody cut now uh, would be uh, would not be what I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to uh, to see him uh, knock him out clean, or the ref to stop it pretty soon, because he's taking a lot of punishment. Although it's probably too early to actually uh, call it off. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, as I say, it's it's one-sided. It's it's pretty much as one side of the fight as you're going to see, but that's it. Zayas, he's blocking a lot of the stuff. He's taking it high on the head. He's blocking it with the hands and arms. Yeah, so, you know, the referee. Oh, he knows really, how to look after himself. Yeah. He's been around a long time, and his defence is fantastic. But I think he's too light, too short. And yeah, all definitely. the usual, all the usual things. Yeah. So it's been a good workout for Sexton so far. He's certainly been busy. He hasn't been lazy. Um, you know, he's not blowing at all yet. He's certainly, you know. He's thrown quite a lot of punches, hasn't had a lot of pressure coming back, which is what tends to tire you out a little bit more. Um, but no, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with Sexton's work tonight. He's, I mean, that's what he needs to be doing there, just through the left hook to the body there. Just needs to be doing a little bit more, just a little bit more. Bring the elbows down and come back with the headshots. And Frank, do you reckon this is going to lead to a knockout? Um, looking at it at the moment, I'd be surprised to be perfectly honest with you. Zayas does, does know how to cover up very well. I'd be, I'd be surprised if he stops him, but I think if he starts to put a bit more variety in his work, he'll definitely be on the cards. But if it carries on following this pattern, he'll probably see the end out, Zayas. I have to say, you know, if the opponent's family are watching him across the seas, I have to say uh, he's a very, very brave boy and he's putting up a good fight, he's really having a go and uh, he's what they call, he's really earning his money tonight. You know, he's not gone down and done a moody, he's fighting and he's trying to win the fight, which is uh, very, very credible. Toughest, toughest game in the world, Jess, to be honest with you, mate. Toughest game in the world. These boys in the away corner, they're the ones that don't get pampered. I mean, he's, uh, I think he's from Lithuania, the lad. He's probably flown over yesterday, maybe even today. Straight from Luton Airport, straight down here, waiting. Maybe had an hour or two to relax and have something to eat. Get in here and do this and it'll probably be on a flight home tomorrow. It's a tough one. Probably flew by EasyJet, he got upgraded, he got a seat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Lucky boy. Oh, 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 oh. Getting started off off now. Same way for Sepson. Changes, uh, changes the tactics a little bit. Goes with a bit more body work. You know, as I say, I mean, he, he may well be happy to just coast through, get the six round of the belt, come back with a nice easy win. You know, get a bit of fitness work in the tank. I mean, it's not a particularly tough fight. Just, he could be out again in another like, six weeks or so. Months. Right. Yeah, that's six months of a tough fight. So, um, probably need some rounds. But as I say, if I was in the corner, I, I, I wanted to get this kid out of there. To be honest. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's very one-sided now, I think. Um, I mean, it, 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 you know, we can't say it's a disappointing fight. It's not as good as the other two. Uh, the bonus is it's great to see a star name like uh, Sam Sexton fighting. Um, but it is, it, it is somewhat one-sided. Uh, still enjoyable for the fight fans because uh, the opponent is still in there giving his all. Sizes to me looks like he's starting to tire a little bit. I've seen him take a few gulps of air. Um, a couple of times the hands have dropped a little bit. So, you know, possibly a stoppage could be on the cards if they carry on in this fight. There you go. I mean, you never saw that at all. You never saw the hands there low like that in the first three rounds at all. He's dropped his hands a couple of times. You know, Sexton's certainly sharp enough to tag him from the outside with a big shot if he drops his hands like that. If he, want, if he wants to get through it, he's going to have to keep that nice tight guard like it is now. And that, that's what tends to happen. When you, when you start to get a bit tired, naturally the hands just drop. You're not mentally as focused as you was when you first started. You know, you're not quite on the game plan, so the hands will start to drop. He just had to shake his hands out there a bit, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, they start to seize up after a while. Uh, I think that was a bit of showmanship from him, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah to me, that looked like he was trying to say to Sexton, come on, you've got nothing. You're oh, not, I thought he was just bending his arms. No, to no, me. No, no, no. He like was what they call showboating. And he's getting well beat, but it's wonderful to see it because what he's saying there is, you, you're not hurting me. And, and from where I'm sitting, he certainly is. I think he must have been watching Britain's best journeyman, Johnny Greaves. He's the, uh, he's the king of the showboat, my brother, or I train my younger brother. Um, literally, he's the king of the showboat. I mean, he'll show Muhammad Ali how to do a shuffle. He really is, uh, he really is the king of the showboat. And you train your brother down at the Peacock Gym, don't you? That's correct, yeah. Can be quite difficult at times, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, tra yeah training family. That's like trying to teach you, you know, your mum or your brother to drive the car so we just end up pulling each other's hair out. Things do get tense, shall we say, on the yeah, odd occasion. I bet. But, and uh, in a ring. Yeah, you know, I mean, in, in the ring, it's, uh, you know, on fight night, he gets in there, he does what he needs to do, and he comes through, as I say. He's a good journeyman. Pretty much similar to Zayas. They're, they're, they're professional tough guys. They know what they're doing, they know how to look after themselves, you know. So I think we've got two more rounds to go here, five and six, I believe. Um, you know, I'd like to see Zayasas make the final bell. Probably already he's got work lined up for next week or the week after or the week after. Um, and you, you know, can travel all over the world with what's it's amazing. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. You, you never know where the phone's going to ring, as I say. I mean, uh, it's Lithuania, he's, he's probably got the call the week to come over here. Maybe he's going to you know, no, no, I mean, some of these, he's not really a journeyman, but some of these guys yeah, understand yeah. more money than some of the names, because as Frank says, they're always in work. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, taking my brother as a case in point, he's been a pro for four years, he's had 75, you know. He's, he's, he's done well there, you know. They, they, they do well for themselves, they're all right, but... As I say, Zayas is a professional tough guy, good tight defence. I'd like to see him hit, make the final bell now, to be honest with you. Still looks like he's got a little bit of a spring in his step. The hands are coming back up again. Now, listening to the corner there, and they're imploring Sexton to put them together, put them together. They're trying to get him to throw punches in combinations rather than just that single jab. Oh, that's what you're talking about, yeah. 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 Their corner are just to the right of here, and I've just overrun it, as I say. Put them together. 
Sometimes the fighters get in there and they go into autopilot almost. They just don't, they do, they go in, they don't really think too much about what they're doing. Um, you know, little, little switch of stances there for the Sexton. Switch south four for a few seconds, I haven't seen him do that before. And when the guys are fighting, do they ever see red? Do you know when guys can, you know, just get really in the moment and just, are they always oh, so, in control? Uh, no, 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 I mean, obviously it depends on the fighter's personality, but yeah, it does happen on the odd occasion that a fighter absolutely loses his rag. I mean, we've seen fighters headbutt others and deliberately punch and blow, you know, in the family jewels, so... Yeah, it can happen at any time. But there's sometimes, I mean, there's fighters that will get in there and they'll speak to each other. And they'll say, you know, you're not hitting that hard, or you punch like a wall. And they, they, they throw all sorts of stuff in there, you know. Fighting talk. Yeah, again, I mean, if you're on a fighting like Zayas, I'm sure if you could speak English, it would be trying to wind. I'm sure if you're trying to wind sex enough by talking to him, telling him there's nothing. You just stay focused on your job and it just gets jab, 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 jab. It's hard, but that's a nice to wait for. So another little burst there from Zyasus. Sexton not troubled by that in the slightest. Doesn't look like it's particularly heavy-handed, Zyasus. Has got nine stoppages on his record, but, you know, I think a lot of them have come a light heavyweight and pulls away. He's not going to trouble Sam Sexton tonight. Frank, I don't know whether the fans would be slightly upset that he hasn't got rid of this guy uh, and he's making hard work of it. Um, oh, it's a big right hand there, big right hand there from Sexton Bobby. He's got him under pressure now, the stoppage could be coming, he needs to just pick his punches. Again, a little bit more Show showboating. Again. Even there, he clearly wobbled him with that overhand right. Backed him onto the ropes, let a few shots go, but let him out of there pretty easily. So, yeah, yeah. to me, he looks like he's content to just get around under his belt, yeah, you're probably right. do the work, and then move on to the next fight. And then we're going to have a hard and chat to us in the next interview. It'll be interesting to get his view. This started this round a little bit better, Sexton. A little, little bit, little bit of a burst there. And also, it'd be good to uh, remind our viewers at home that they can tweet into you, can't they? And we'd like to hear, you know, your guys' views at home on what you're thinking about tonight. Yeah, they certainly can. The Twitter address is at Frank Reeves. I, I think I've had a couple come through. Um, you know, a couple of people saying they're enjoying the show. We'll have a, we'll have a look through in a minute. Oh, we've had Alfie's sister tweet in, Ruby. Uh, just wanted to say how proud I am of my big brother Alfie winning his first pro fight. Hope you liked him. Fantastic. Nice. We Thank loved you. Alfie. A little nod of appreciation from Sexton there. One of the shots must have got through because he just acknowledged it. Uh, looked like a right uppercut from Zyasus. Had a little nod from, from Sexton. So. Pretty much, you know, the same, 
same pattern as the previous five rounds. He's content, Sexton. He's going to fight in little bursts, but he's content to just win the fight on the jab. Keep things nice and easy, as I say. I mean, he's in there. He can feel whether Zyatis has got the power to potentially trouble him. He probably feels totally comfortable in there at the moment. Uh, you know? And I notice when he's looking, he's sort of looking down. So what's the key? Where do you look when you're boxing? What? There's one thing there in his eyes, and he's looking down. Sexton's looking straight ahead. Zyasis is looking down because he's trying to watch Sexton's gloves. He's trying to watch uh, Sexton's gloves. His gloves really low. The lead hand is low, the back hand's low at the moment. Zyasis is keeping his guard nice and high at all times. So Sexton's watching his gloves at a nice and high, he's watching Sexton's gloves at a low. That's why he looks like he's looking see, down. Okay. That's good feet there from Sexton, moves well, as I say, for a big man, he, he moves quite well. <laughs> comfortable win for Sexton there, comfortable, won that by all six, clear. Charlie George, how are you doing tonight, Charlie? Legend from Arsenal, Charlie George, a great fight fan and an all-round good fellow. What do you think of the fights tonight, George? Absolutely tremendous. I mean, the second fight, the uh, the young lad was his first pro fight, absolutely amazing. And the lad in the other corner, had two very strong. He didn't know which way it was going, but uh, absolutely tremendous. Three good fights. I mean, this this one's a bit one side of it. It's good to see the big name like Sam Sexton fighting in a in a, 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 you know, a, a small venue like this. Yes. Well, and the, the fans like to see heavyweights, don't they, Charlie? Absolutely. I mean, the small venues are probably the best venues in the world. Oh, I mean, absolutely. you go back to the old oh, York really? Hall yeah, 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 years ago, yeah, yeah, years yeah, yeah. ago. But, uh, no, I'd sooner see a fight like, in a small room. Absolutely tremendous. It's nice. It's not all about seeing the top fighters. It's about seeing fighters that progress. Yeah. What are your views about it going out tonight on people's phones, on the internet, what are your views on Yeah, absolutely brilliant. It's fantastic. You know, everything's different to how the old days, as we know. So, you know, if you can put it out there, people can see uh, that you've got to lose. And Charlie George must have fans all over the world, and now they can see you and hear you. It's fantastic. I've got about three at the moment, just so. That's one, that's one more than me. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for my media, my Fantastic evening. Pleasure to talk to you. Have a great evening. Thanks very much. The legend that is Charlie George Arsenal. He played in my showbiz football team and uh, he's a great boy. He does a lot for charity. We played the SAS and uh, Jim Davidson arranged it because uh, he loves the SAS and so we went up to Shropshire somewhere and Charlie George uh, played for them but he couldn't score past me because uh, every time he came near me to score I gave him my grin and, and he, 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 he couldn't see where, where the ball was going. So I blind, with my smile I blind. Mickey, of course, is in a different scenario. He's uh, really just coming into the fore, but perhaps a bit later in life. Yeah. Um, in the same way, could you come back to me and tell me a little bit about Mickey recently, what's made change, well, transform? Because he's obviously been transformed. He is so motivated at the moment. Well, like, like I say, for Mickey, I would, I would say like he's got a young family and he's looking at life in a different way now. He's looking at this as a career and to obviously make something of himself and um, you know, for his family. So he's looking at titles, looking at getting some good money and um, you know his aspect of life probably changed a little bit in himself uh, he's probably grew into a man over the last three to four years and I'm not saying that's because of the time he spent with me because it's probably not it probably is his home environment's changed like I say he's got a young child you know he wants things for them you know so he's like trying to work he's trying to he's trying to balance the two careers so it's quite hard I've probably been with Mickey since 09, uh, watch Mickey's fight prior to that, so I know Mickey's style quite well, and I've spent a lot of time with Mickey. Obviously, we've been abroad, and we've been a few different places together, and, and you know, travelled around a lot of gyms. So I know Mickey's style quite well. I know, I know his good days and his bad days. You know, I can't say I know all his eating habits. I wish I did, 
but you know, I know his weight very well, and I know how he's going to react to walls like losing the weight and, and that sort of thing. It's just time spent with people. That's the most important thing for me about coaching. It's not like how many press ups they can do or whatever. You know, it's really like getting the best out of them on, on any given day. So, they're the sort of things you work on. And for me as a trainer, but actually other trainers work on different things. I'm a featherweight, super featherweight. I, I want to do featherweight, but you know, it's just got to take things as they come. So at the moment, I'm doing super featherweight. Um, the last couple of years, I, I had, I had, uh, I've been boxing, but I had a few years out, and I'll give up when I was about 25. I come on, I, I come on a bit of our times in and out of work and that. You know, I had a little baby, so I thought, oh, I thought I can, I go and just do a bit of training, so I could put on a bit of weight. So I thought I go and do a bit of training, get myself fit. And then once I was back in training, I started it in a bag, and then I started sparring again. And then I thought, you know, right, next next thing I know, I'm boxing again. You know, so uh, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've come back. I've been fighting good fighters, but I've enjoyed it. You know, I've, I've really enjoyed my boxing this time round. And uh, yeah, I love it. I'm loving the training. I'm loving being fit, and I love getting in there and fighting. I fight hard. I train hard, and I'm looking forward to it. As long as I'm fit and I'm focused, I'm, I'm, I'm an hard little fighter to beat. I come forward. I'm, I'm here to fight. I turn up every all, I, 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 every time I fight. I train hard, and I always come to fight. You know, I don't I don't ever turn up thinking oh, I just for the money. I come. I want to I want to fight. I want to win. The kid on fire, and he's fought some good. He's fought like he's he's a bit like me. As he goes, he's fought all good. He's fought a lot of good fighters. He's fought Paul, Atp Paul Atpleby. He's fought Paul Truscott. He's been in and out of thereabouts. He's had a bit of time for this. I know he's going to come. He know he's going to come to fight. And you know, I, I just feel I feel so fit and strong at the moment. I feel like I'm going to stick some pressure on him. And after four or five rounds, I see how he is. You know what I mean? But I can't, to be honest, the, the way I look, how strong I feel, when I fit, I feel. I thought I'm just going to walk through him, you know? I, I ain't bigging myself up and I'm like, but I just feel so good and I can't wait. But uh, obviously, I, I'm ambitious. I don't want to come in. Uh, I've had fights, so I've turned, uh, so when I come back, I would only come back, I thought to earn a couple of quid on top of my wages, you know? I didn't think, I knew I was a decent little fighter, but I didn't think, uh, um, I thought well, I had three years out. I thought I'm, I'm going to be put in as an opponent and things like that, but I, I've been, that's happened. I've come back and I've been winning fights, you know, because I'm quite determined. I've been, I'm determined to do well, you know. I, I don't just want to be a, a journeyman, you know. I, 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 could, I could take that route. I've been, you know, I mean, that's it's a route I have to take, but I knew if I was fit, I could take, I could start winning fights. All I've got to be is fit and focused, and like I said, I'm an hard fighter to beat. Now, assuming this fight goes the way that uh, you hope, What's his future after this? Well, please God, the fight goes the way we hope, and obviously he's trained hard and he's put a lot of time and effort into it, so, you know, all being equal, it should do. Uh, we'd like to move on. We're looking at, uh, you know, providing you don't get no cuts or any bad injuries. There's prize fire at the end of the month, we'd like to get onto that, and then probably move on to a British title fight, which would be, you know, which would be great. It'd be good for Mickey, you know, it's a good bit of history. was named Mickey, isn't it, tonight? I've seen both these boys before. Yeah, as I say, I mean, Coveney, Coveney's a real good, honest bro. He yeah, always yeah. comes to fight. He'll be on the front foot for the whole fight. He'll be looking to take the fight to Class 11. Looking Class forward 11, to it. Class 11, as I say, I've seen him on the circuit a few times. International um, Masters title, great. Yeah. Gonna be good. Should, should be good, should be good. Second down, first round. Keep things nice and tight in this round, Mickey. He needs to, after he does his work, he needs to bring his, bring his hands back to his head, protect his head. Don't get too lazy. He can't afford to get lazy early on in the fight.
good little start from Coveney so far. Not don't seem too too afraid to let his hands go. Especially if it's not too fussy at the moment, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty content to just cover up and take the shots. But that's an impressive start from Vicky so far. Good body shots there. Another good body shot. Two. Three. That's good work. I'm impressed by Coveney's start. How long will they have done intense training for, for a night like tonight? Um, well, I believe Mickey, Mickey last boxed um, mid-August uh, over in Ireland when he won the Irish Super Featherweight title. So he would have probably had a couple of weeks out. He would have probably had a good six weeks for this, to be honest. Maybe, you know, the first couple of weeks back training would have been pretty easy. It would have been a bit of stamina work, stuff like that. But certainly the last month, it would have been pretty intense. You know... So, I mean, I train with Mickey, see him in the gym on a regular basis. He trains twice a day, comes in, does his gym work with Martin and then runs in the evenings. You know, it's, it's a tough gig, especially when you've got a day job as well, which a lot of these boxers have, you know. Hard workers, aren't they? You know, if you want to get to any sort of level in this game, you've got to be prepared to put the work in. It's yeah. all about what you do in the gym, you know. It's an old boxing cliche, but if you train hard, you fight easy. And it's all about the work that you do, you know. You could get the most talented boxer in the world if he's not fit more often than not nine times out of ten the fitter boxer will beat the talented boxer you know because unfortunately or fortunately whatever way you look at it it's uh it's all about fitness this game it really is talent can only take you so far if you're not fit so again good start from mickey vasilev is is working in in little spits and spurts um, but you know more solid start made by Coveney, to be honest. Heads. The heads was coming quite close there. They're going to have to be careful, obviously. You've got the orthodox fighter in Vasilev and the southpaw fighter in Coveney. Sometimes what happens is when you've got the lead feet crossing over like that, there can be a clash of heads sometimes. So they're both going to have to be careful of that. They come close a few times, but that's something they're going to have to watch for. And Jess, what are you thinking of that round? No, I, I, was, just, I was just wondering, Frank, whether these, whether these two fighters would actually know one another away from the ring. I, I wouldn't have thought so, to be no. honest with you. They, they may well have come, in, have come across each other uh, on, if they've both been on the same show or something like that, but I wouldn't have thought they know each other. They, they've got a couple of common opponents. Um, the guy that Mickey boxed last time out, Finn Barry, that, that Mickey won, beat for his uh, super featherweight title, has also boxed Vasilev. Now, Finn Barry beat Vasilev, and Mickey beat Finn Barry. Again, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that because it A, B, and B. They know one another. You know, but they, know, they, do, they do their homework on one another, don't they? they yeah, of course yeah. they do, yeah. yeah they, they would have looked each other up on YouTube. Or, Google. Yeah, they would have Googled each other. Google definitely. them up. A little bit like I did with you, Jess, before the day started. <laughs> Strange you should say that. I did that with you, too. Thank you very much. Oh, it's good left up from Vasilev there, just forcing Mickey to cover up a little bit. Looks like he took it okay to me, though. Well, I mean, he's certainly here to win this fight, Vasilev. He's, he's not coming here to lay down. No. Let's face it, another good fight. Yep, so far. We've had three really competitive fights. One a little bit, not so much, but... Absolutely. You know, very close fights, all of them. Do fighters get known for certain moves? Yeah, certainly, you know, some people do. Obviously, you had David Hay with his big overhand right that he was called the haymaker, you know. Um, yeah, you get you get certain fighters that have a particular punch that they look for. Um, I mean, you know, to me, it's, it's all much of a muchness. If you've got a good right hand, you throw it. If you haven't, you don't, you know. And we had Frank Bruno here earlier on tonight, which was fantastic, supporting the event. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, big Frank, he was known for having a ram rod jab and a massive overhand right, you know. So people do remember... 
fight as honey punches as we like to call them but um, you know everyone's different some fighters are good on work rate alone some fighters are busy 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 some fighters have got slick skills good head movement you know it's all different types all different styles and the beauty of boxing is you can get two undercard fights like what we had the first two fights yeah um, if they're evenly matched you can get good fights you know so as I say, it's all about levels. I mean, again, this one here is starting. It looks like it's going to be a decent tear up to me. Yeah, you know. He's really going for it now. Yeah, he's probably going to back off now. He's going to go for a little rest. Mickey's going to get on the front foot. You know. Yeah, no. I'd like to see Mickey just tighten things up. Just get his hands a little bit tighter after he's throwing. If you're watching there. He's doing his work and he's just not quite getting their hands back to the chin. And that's when Vasilev is stepping forward, letting two and threes go, and he's getting some success. Maybe even like to see Mickey straighten up the left hand a little bit. He's throwing it, he's looping it in a little bit. I'd like to see him straighten it up and try and throw it straight through the middle of Vasilev's guard. See how Vasilev's got his hands tight to his head there. Mickey needs to throw it straight. Left. In the middle. Straight through the middle of the glove. Yeah. At the moment, he's throwing it a little bit like an overhand left. And Vasilev is just blocking the shots. Woo! Oh, he just kissed him. Is that normal? <laughs> Is that a kiss on the cheek? Uh, I think he was apologising for catching him after the bell. Oh, just, okay. He, he just, just for a shot, just a fraction of a second after the bell went there. So oh, okay. That was just his apology. Yeah, oh, yeah. fair fighting. We like that. I loved it. Tell me, Frank, do, do boxers, once they start fighting, look for a name to be called? You know, like uh, like Billy Walker was the, the blonde bombshell. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think some of these things are bestowed on them by the press and they just stick. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've had various nicknames in your time. Yeah, I, I, I was the golden boy of the 60s, so that, that's what they called me. Um, but but I, I should imagine being a, a boxer, it's great to have that kind of name because that you become famous more for the name, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Than your real name, if you know what I mean. Of course you do, yeah. I mean, to say, unfortunately, over the last few years, boxing hasn't had the press coverage that it probably deserves. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we, we don't quite get the fighters in the public eye like we used to. But, you know, there's some real good pros out there. Boxing's going through a bit of a revival. And hopefully, if things like tonight's event on sportface.tv carry on, you know, we can we can start to get these boxes back into people's front rooms and let's get some of the nicknames out there. Yeah, the nicknames, that's it, yeah. And not only in their front rooms, they could be watching this anywhere right now on their mobile phones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so if you are viewers at home watching it anywhere bizarre, do uh, Twitter us. You can uh, tweet Frankie right here, um, which is at Frank Greaves on Twitter. We yep. want to hear from you. We've had a few come through tonight. I thank you for your tweets. Uh, had a couple of questions come in. And you can email me on jessconrad.hotmail.com <laughs> or look me up on www.jessconrad.com. You had to get there in that, that in there, Jess, yeah. didn't you? Yes. That was a good right hook. Jess Conrad at hotmail.com. Need a wonderful singer out there in the world. I'm your man. I shall sing you my lovely hits like Bebop Alula and Johnny Be Good and Halfway to Paradise. No, it's great to be here watching these boys. What dedicated people they are, these boxers. It's really a fantastic sport. And uh, they really earn their money and uh, they excite the audiences. And now they're being shown uh, all over the world. It's, it, it's such, a, such a great thing for these, uh, these boxers to, to get, to get uh, a wider audience. It's uh, really fantastic. And we're at the beginning of a wonderful, new, exciting era. Uh, in, the, in this sort of thing, you know, it's, it's really fantastic. Frank, how are they getting on in the ring? Yeah, again, I mean, so far it looks like a very evenly matched fight. They're both having their successes. Um, you know, Vasilev seems to be having a little bit more success in this round than what he had done previously. But I think that's more due to Mickey's sloppiness, to just, you know, due to Coveney's sloppiness rather than Vasilev's good work, you know. To so say, Mickey's just letting his shots go and he's being a little bit lazy with the defence. Good work from Coveney there. See, now I'd like to see him take a step back, just go, regain his composure and start again, rather than just trying to stay in Vasilev's face all the time. 
you know, you land four or five punches there, just take a step off, go for a walk around the ring, get your composure yourself, rather than staying in there and run the risk of making a mistake. So there's some good work there. I mean, he's, he's putting Vasilev under good pressure there, um, and that, that was a nice sign there. Vasilev took a walk there, looked like he wanted to go, just get a breather himself. You know, maybe just first signs that he might be starting to struggle at the pace. End of another round. Yeah, fantastic. Strangely enough, I don't sniff a knockout in this fight. It's funny, isn't it? I just think it'll be a, a points decision. I don't see a knockout. I could be wrong, but uh, I just have one of those feelings that I don't see a knockout here. I mean, I'm not professional. I can tell they, well, they've sort of met their match. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very even. Well, I, I think the uh, I think um, Mickey uh, Mickey's on top, I think. Yeah, for me, for me, Mickey's a round up at the moment. We've yeah. had three. Um, you know, I think Vasilev possibly sneaked around in there, maybe the second. Uh, but yeah, to, to me, I think Nick is a roundup. After three, I'll give two to Kovny and one to Vasilev. I think he's a roundup. And how does the scoring work in, in boxing for people at home that don't know, and people like me? <laughs> well, I mean, they have a thing called uh, a ten-point must system, which the winner of each round must score, must be scored ten points. So, if Kovny wins the next round. Uh, and he doesn't score any knockdowns or he doesn't win it by an absolute lad slide where the other guy doesn't land a single punch and Mickey lands 50, um, he'll win the round 10 points to 9 points. If he scores a knockdown, he'll gain an extra point. So it'll be 10 points to 8 points. So it's a 10 point must system. Brilliant. You know your stuff, Frank. You've got the right man on the job. <laughs> I'll try my best, but I'm making most of it up, to be honest. Good little exchange there. Some good hooks on the inside from Mickey. So he just needs to keep those hands nice and tight, nice and tight. See so there again there from Mickey. He let his hands go, he let three or four go, which is what you want from your fighters, but just wants a bit more variety. A little bit of stuff up the middle there, maybe bring in the old uppercut. Vasilev's hands are very tight to the sides of his head there. He's very open up the middle. He's not prepared to throw anything back. He's, he's content to just sit there and cover up. That's where Vicky needs to bring the shots up the middle. Bring the uppercuts in, then bring the hooks through. Try and move the hands, try and create the openings to land the shots. And that's a little bit better from Mickey there. Three punch combination and it just slipped out of range. Just made Vasilev miss with a counter. That's what he needs to be doing. Twos and threes, step off, make Vasilev miss and then go back and start again. Each encounter should be, forgetting previous losing what's happened, step forward, start again from scratch. Every time you step away, every time there's a break, you step back and start again. And it's all ad lib, it's not like a script. Anything can happen. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, some fighters obviously work to a game plan. I would assume uh, that Mick is working to a particular type of game plan to yeah. that they would have worked on in the gym. Him and Martin together for the set now that looked at this kid on YouTube. Um, you know, it, it, he's probably going to be throwing particular shots that he feels that Vasilev is more susceptible to. It seems to me like he's done a lot of work to the body so far, so yeah. maybe they think he's a little bit fragile around the body. Um, but as I say, certainly the better work has come from Mickey. For me, he's been a little bit lackadaisical with the defence, and that's that's what's allowed Vasilev to land the shots. But you'll always expect the unexpected in fight the fight game, don't you? That's the beauty of boxing, Jeff. Absolutely. You expect the unexpected. Yeah, you never know what's going to occur. Yeah, would uh, would the boxing news be covering this? I, I would have thought so. Yeah, yeah. They, they usually send someone round to every show. They'll they'll be a write up on this show. Uh, in next week's boxing news comes out on Thursday. Yeah. And they get reviewed like like the entertainment business. Yeah, don't they? yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what it is. That's what it's going to be about entertainment. So for me, there, that's another company round. Yeah, that's another company round. You see Natalie actors get reviewed in a, in a magazine called The Stage and Television Today. And boxers have have uh, boxing news. Uh, is, what's the ring? That's more American, isn't it? The ring? It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got the ring, which is American. Over here we have Boxing Monthly and Boxing News. 
Uh, we've got Box Rec, which is an online site that has all the boxers' records there. They usually do reviews of most of the shows. Um, Hatton TV. Yeah, you got Hatton TV on YouTube. There's, there's lots of stuff now. I mean, it's, it's really, really is starting to, to get popular again, boxing, which for me is a great thing. And you remember your good old days of boxing when your mum got in with that handbag, as you were telling us earlier. Yes, and of course, um, uh, the early days of, of my dear, lovely friend Henry Cooper, who also boxed for, for the Fitzroy Lynn, and uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful human being, and uh, I think of him every day. He was uh, uh, a, a brother water rat. Uh, I'm a water rat, which is like um, a showbiz fraternity, and he was also a member of the Variety Club Golfing Society, and we played, we made, raised lots of money together for charity, and he was a wonderful human being. And uh, he would he would be at a night like this because he was a great fight fan. He used to come and support, uh, and he would love this uh, internet business. The f fact that it was you know giving young fighters uh, a showcase all over the world. Now it's been a great night. I've enjoyed myself. It's been fantastic. I had some great fights, and the audience have been wonderful. You can see, you can feel the excitement in this room. Another tight start to the round here, again, you know, it, it, it following a similar pattern, you know, Mickey's working, doing some quality work there, throwing some good body shots, and then it's just letting Vasilev come in, just letting him come back into the fight, just being a bit lax with the defence again. You know, if, I've got a, if I've got a criticism of Kofi, sometimes it's, it can be a little bit one pace. it just tends to keep plodding forward, plodding forward, throwing the same sort of combinations, body, body, head, all the time, you know, really needs to have a little bit more variety in his work and it possibly would, would be a lot better for him in a fight like this tonight. You know, it's just constantly there in Vasilev's face all the time. He needs to let his punches go, step off to the side, maybe spin on create an angle and then come back in from a different side. You know? Let his punches go, step round, tip it round his front foot and throw his own left hand over the top. Two good headshots there, partially blocked by Vasilev, but again, I think Nick is edging around, you know, seems to be on the front foot for most of the time. Good work from Nicky there, good double jab left hand. Good body shot, good left hook to the body there from Kovny. Absolutely fantastic right hands to the body going in from Vasilev there. I was absolutely captivated. That was just above us and uh, I almost lost myself there with the commentary. I was just watching to see Mickey's reaction there. It really sunk in some good right hands to the body there. Mickey took a big gasp of out. I think a couple of them got through and they might have hurt Mickey. They're, they're going to hurt him later on in the fight. If this fight goes long, he can't keep taking body shots like that. Uh, they've got the next day, they must be just aching so much oh you know I mean for the next couple of days after this they'll they'll literally be black and blue all over they'll be wow. sore it'll be an effort to get out of bed to be honest again tight 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 round there I mean you know I, I might even have edged that one towards Vasilev for the quality body work there I mean there was three unanswered right hands to the body there that clearly troubled Coveney the rest of the round was pretty tight. I think I think I'd edge that one towards Vasilev, which for me just puts Mickey a point up after five. Round six. Final round. Uh, no, this is ten this one. This is ten, ten round. round yeah. Fantastic. Ten rounds. Ten round. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a title fight, you see. It's for an uh, international master's title, and it's so they don't have to go ten rounds because it's, it's a title fight. When you think about it, Frank, it's, uh, you know, 10 rounds, a long time, huh? Three minutes each round. Like, oh, the, the level of stamina. Fitness, the level of fitness of these boys really is, for me, incredible. you know, when you discount these super endurance athletes, you know, the guys that cycle 28 miles, swim 10 miles, and then do a 10K run, that's a different sort of endurance. This, where you've got someone in front of you hitting your back, I mean, it's absolutely, they have to be so fit, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. They really do, I mean, you know, people that have never tried it, I implore you to go down to your local boxing gym, just put on a pair of gloves and just hit your bag for a minute and you'll have a newfound respect for boxers. 
It's a good start of the round to Vasilev here again. Started well. Throwing some good right hands in there. Looks like he's having a go in this round. He's, he's troubling Mickey at the moment. Good right hand there from Vasilev. He's, uh, he, this is his best round of the fight so far for me. Mickey's cut there. Yeah, I think Mickey's cut over his left eye. Yeah, it could put pay to his prize fighter ambitions, but you know we'll have to have a look. The corner will have a look. We'll see how bad it is. Not bad. Black eye. Blood. I don't think it was a head. I think it was a punch. Yeah, he's just walking onto too many right hands for me at the moment. Too many right hands. So that's probably what calls that punch. You can hear the count corner there shouting, step round, step round. They're, they're trying to get Mickey to step round to his right hand side, away from Vasilev's right hand. So get Mickey wants to step away to his right, away from Vasilev's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. As I say, at the moment, he's just standing in front of him for just too long. Referee wants the corner to have a look at the cut. They're going to get anything it. can happen. You see, now this could be stopped, Absolutely. and he's on top. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't think they'll stop it. To me, no, no. it looks like the cut's below the eye. It's not going to have any trouble there with blood running into the eye. Should be absolutely fine. The referee obviously just wants the corner to wipe it over so we can have a look and inspect yeah. it, see what, see how bad it is. Yeah, yeah. Little bit of a swelling under there makes oh, yeah, it look a little nasty. bit worse, but you know, it probably looks worse than it is. Once the swelling goes down, the cut will close up. But the ref is is entitled to stop the stop stop it just so that the corner can have a look at it and patch it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any time the referee can call a halt, call a halt to the action, get the corner to wipe the cut down so they can have a look. If he fixes this, you know, potentially a fight stopping cut, there'll be a doctor at ringside. He'll get him to inspect the cut, ask for his opinion, and they'll come to a decision before the referee decides what to do. The protection for boxers now is much better than it ever was. Absolutely, we've got anaesthetists sitting ringside, we've got oxygen, we've got uh, brain surgeons ringside, they instantly know what to do, they know what all the signs are. You know, fortunately, touch wood, you know, we haven't had we haven't had an accident for a long time and long may that continue. Another good round there for Vasilev. To me that makes the fight all level after six. I've got three rounds apiece. Knockouts, how dangerous is that on their health for a boxer's health? Um, you know, I mean, any 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 head impact has got the potential to be dangerous. Um, you know, I could fall over it and on the side of the bar, and it's got the potential to be dangerous. Generally speaking, uh, these are fit guys; they're in good condition. It doesn't really affect them. I mean, a lot of a lot of fighters that suffer damage, a lot of them will suffer that caused in. Uh, too much sparring in gyms where they'll have, they'll have fights in gyms that are sometimes harder than the fights that they have on the night. Um, for me, you know, boxing's moved on, the, the, the technology of the glass, the protection's moved on, even the gum shields. The gum shield has, plays a massive part in protecting the boxers from it. The modern plastics and polymers that they use in these gum shields, they, they, they act almost like mini shock absorbers. It, it's like a little bit of suspension for the mouth. So when you take a, when you take a clean punch on the chin, the teeth, and it absorbs the shock of the shot. So there's a lot more protection for the fight, isn't there? And the ref stop fights earlier now than yeah, they Yeah, I think they do, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do, yeah. yeah. Well, in your case, it was your mum that stopped the fight. <laughs> <laughs> With her handbag. Wow. Absolutely cracking right hand from Vasilev there. He's on unsteady legs, Mickey. On very unsteady legs. He's going to struggle to get through this round now. He's going to have to look to hold on. He's going to have to look to hold on and weather the stomp now. did not see that coming. No, as I say, the lot, I've given the last couple of rounds for Vasilev. He's done some good work. Um, you know, Mickey was just in front of him for too long. He needs to tuck up now, Mickey, and step forward. Step forward and hold on. Hold him round the waist, round the arm, round the head. He needs to just hold on, grab on or work, walk away. He doesn't want to be engaging Vasilev in a fight at the moment because his, his legs are going to be weak. 
he's not going to have much purchase in his own punches. And that cut on Mickey's eye is really starting to open up now, isn't it? Say, fortunately, it's underneath the eye. So the bad ones are when they're on the eyelid or they're above the eye. So the blood runs into the eye and it the vision. vision. So at the moment, that's in a safe place. It's, it's not really going to be bothering Mickey too much. Okay. To say, I mean, he looks, he looks like he's starting to get a little bit of bounce back in his, his own, his own steps there. Vasilev done a lot of work trying to get him out. Um, tough, tough round for Kovalev so far. Good right hand to the body again from Vasilev. It's amazing. He was out on his feet there, but he's, he's back. He's focused. Yeah. Uh, you know, the strength of this box, the resolve of this box, he was out there, you could see his eyes went, now he's back in it. It's, it's absolutely amazing. They're resilient, amazing. aren't they? It's amazing. It's testament, Jess and Natalie, to, to their fitness, it's the work that they do in the gym. Um, you know, I mean, Mickey will get up and he'll run for miles every day, he'll come down the gym, he'll do work on his leg strength all the time, he's squatting and squat jumping and plyometric jumping. They're constantly skipping, they're doing work on their legs every day. So. When you get hit like that, you know, it sends shockwaves through the entire body, the legs go, hence you fall over, but it's their fitness and their leg strength that allows them to get back up. There's only one thing for sure, he won't be dating a bird tomorrow at the start of his boat race. I think you'll be happy to just have a rest. Yeah. But again, I mean, this so far to me, he's come back into the round well, Kovny, come back into the round well, I mean, to say, it does, it does train on, hard. Mickey. Just as I say, just a little bit one-dimensional. To me, he's just walking forward in straight lines and he's allowing Vasilev to just get his work off now and then move off. Vasilev's going to throw a two and a three punch. Jab straight down, move off to the side. Nick is just a little bit one-dimensional. He just went to his corner then to say, I'm OK. Amazing, amazing. Do you know what? Fighters, they're either the bravest people in the world or the biggest bluffers in the world, you know? That's true. I've seen people that have virtually knocked out cold and they'll get up on unsteady legs and say to the referee, ref I slipped, it was a slip, he never hit me. You know, it's all it's all sometimes gets a bit macho and they and they try and show that they're tougher. You know? Full of Bellani as they say. Something like that. Yeah. As I say, I'm sure they're very concerned in the Coveney corner, they're gonna be working furiously on that cut. Vasilev to me, you know, he's breathing quite heavy. I'm watching him there. He's breathing quite heavy. The ref, uh, the, the the corner team there, they're helping him breathe. He's, he's effort to work hard. That's one thing about Mickey. I mean, to say, he can be a bit one-dimensional, but he's in your face constantly. He can make you work virtually for every second of the round, which is what he's doing. You know, fortunately, he just walked onto that right hand in that last round there, and he lost it by 10-8 for me. So that puts him two points down now. So Frank, who do you reckon you're going to be interviewing at the end of this? Well, I'd love to say Kovny, to be honest with you, because I'm not sure how good uh, Vasilev's English is. But <laughs> at, 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 at the moment, you know, it's the same. Mickey, he was floored quite heavily in that last round. He got up on unsteady legs. It certainly wasn't a flash knockdown. Um, but he came back into the round. He finished the round really well. He really did finish the round well after a knockdown like that early in the round. So, and at the moment, it looks like he's getting the upper hand again. So, he's just got to keep things nice and tight, nice and tight. Frank, you you you, you couldn't be a hundred percent now watching this fight. Who's going to win? Could you really? No, no, absolutely not. It's the same. I mean, there's some there's some good work from Mickey in this round. He's made a good good start to the round. He's stepping off a little bit to the sides. He's not coming forward in the straight lines that he was before. still got three rounds to go yeah they have yeah yeah we're into the eighth now we've got nine and ten after this but for me mickey needs at least two of these next three rounds at least two of these next three rounds he's winning this one he's winning this one so far so it's a good start to the round for, mickey, for me so you say the other fighters really let him off the hook of it well, you know, I, I don't know whether his own fitness has come into play. He threw a lot of punches in that last round after he threw, after he threw a Kovne. And sometimes, you know, when you're training, you don't condition yourself to throw 30 or 40 punches constantly like that. Sometimes it can take you a round or two to get over that little burst, you know. And it looks to me like Vasilev is out taking this round off. Perhaps he feels ah, like he's yeah, comfortably yeah, yeah. ahead. You know, yeah, maybe yeah. he's having a rest in the round. Um, he's looking to throw the occasional right-hand counter back, just straight down the pipe he's just firing the odd right hand straight back but for me so far this round is on Mickey 
So what's amazing is even through all the fighting, they're actually quite tactfully thinking. Oh, definitely. I mean, you, you've got to remember that these boys are doing this two or three hours a day, three or four hours a day, five, six, seven days a week sometimes, you know? And it's it's like anything like that. It becomes instinctive. A little bit like our commentary tonight, man. Oh, it's all like instinctive. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's my debut. It's my opening night. Jess, we should get you singing in the ring after this, shouldn't we, really? I'll sing to them on the bus on the way home. So another good right hand crept in there from Vasilev and Mickey's knees just seem to dip a little bit. He can't allow this kid to work like that. Just needs to keep things nice and tight. Twos and threes, step off. Step across to Vasilev's left, away from the right hand. For, for me, another cozy round there. Yeah, so the next one's good. We've got nine and ten to go. I've got Mickey one point behind with two rounds to go. With the knockdown obviously being a 10-8 round to Vasilev, I've got Mickey one point behind with two rounds to go. So, you know, really he needs to win both, the, both of these next rounds to win the fight. Uh, if Vasilev nicks one, it'd be interesting to see which way the judges have scored it. There, there was a couple of tight rounds early on. I mean, it, you know, you could say... Yeah, but I'll see it, I'll see it as tight. Well, I, I agree with him. I mean, he's an expert, and what he says is very true. I mean, the, the uh, Mick has got damage on his eye, but of course, that, he doesn't lose points for that. Just because he's got a damaged eye, doesn't it? What do you reckon his trainer's going to be saying to him in the corner right now? They're, they're going to be telling him to just think about what he's doing, keep his hands nice and tight. So step off, give him a few angles, don't be straight in front of him. The thing is with boxing, if you're straight in front sometimes, when, when shots get thrown at you, you instinctively throw back where you think your opponent is going to be. So if they're walking in you straight in, you can virtually shut your eyes and swing for the end swing. And you've, you've got half an idea where they're going to be there. If we're changing the angles, I'm stepping to the left, I'm stepping to the right. You, 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 don't know, you don't know where I'm going to be. It's harder for you to land shots. So, Mickey, sometimes when he gets a bit one dimensional, he just comes forward on a straight line, just like he's doing there to be honest with you. Now, Vasilev pretty much going to shut his eyes and throw two or three punches and swing. And he probably would have landed at um, somewhere on Mickey, be it shoulder or arms or gloves or something like that. It's when Mickey just needs to step there, step right, do his work, and then roll his head again and change the angles. Considering this is the last bout, this is a great one to have, isn't it? Oh, again, you've got two evenly matched fighters. You know, it's a good fight. We've had a knockdown so far. We've had a cup. You know, we've had a bit of drama. It's we've had everything, haven't we? We love yeah, a bit of drama. This is great. We do, we do. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's a good fight. I've been, been pretty impressed with the build so far, you know. Uh, the McRae fight earlier was good. Uh, the Alfie Smith was victorious in the first fight. Uh, Sean Watt and Nathan Dow was, was a good fight. The Sam Sexton fight, maybe I was a little bit disappointed that Sexton just seemed happy to coast through it. But again, this this for me has been a cracking small hole fight. It's been some quality out of four, it's not bad, is it? It's, bad at all. it's been a great night, it really has. And it's still not over yet. So the corner seems to have done a good job on coping this cut. It's, uh, it's obviously still swollen, but it doesn't seem to be bleeding so much. So they, they, they look to have done a good job on the corner there. Good hook from Mickey there. Good hook from Kozny. You can hear the corner there shouting to him to tidy up. That's, that's alluding to the point that I was making, that just after he throws his punches, he doesn't get his hands back tight enough sometimes. And that seems to be when Vasilev is countering him, landing and troubling him. Good work from Vasilev there, another right hand. Right hand to the body, left hook to the body, right hand to the head, lovely combination. The right hand to the head landed. Again, just, I'm not sure if my eyes are deceiving me, but there just seemed to be a momentary dip in Mickey's knees there when, it, when that right hand landed. It just seemed to dip his knees a touch. Some cracking work there from Coveney. Good variety, head and body. Some shots up the middle. Again, to me so far, it's a Mickey round. A little bit of good work in Spurs from Vasilev, but not enough to win the round so far. Nice head move from Kovny. Yeah, it's a Kovny round. 
Well, so we're coming up for round 10. This is such a tight match, isn't it? Boy, Mickey came back strong there at the end of that round. Really did. But I, st I still don't know uh, where we are with this fight. Well, me, Jess, I I've got it all level going into the last round, yeah. to be honest yeah. with you. I gave the first one to Kovny, the second to Vasilev, three and four to Kovny, and the fifth to Vasilev. Six and seven went to Vasilev as well, with seven being a 10 out round. And Mickey, I've given the last two. So that makes them all level going into the last round. So it really wow. is on this. We're going to have a big effort from both. No. And they would 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 they know that? Would they know where they stand now? Would they know that it's down to the last round? I, I would I would think that their corners are going to be telling them that they need to go out in yeah. the last round. We know that it's been a tight fight. Maybe, maybe, just maybe Vasilev <laughs> thinks that he's a little bit further ahead in the fight because of the knockdown. But for me, Kobe is one of the nine who beat him round so far. Um, and obviously getting the point to Vasilev makes about them. All down to the last. All down to the last. Tea. Oh, a cup of tea. An Irish cup of tea. Uh, my mum used to say, go and put the kettle on, Dad. Well, I'm going to have a hot toddy in mine just to help me yeah, sleep. Yeah, that's the way to go after tonight. But again, for me, Kovny really needs to get on the front foot. I really think he needs this round. He needs to work. He needs to go to work. Go and win the round. Don't let Vasilev steal it on the, on the back foot. To me, it seems like Vasilev, he obviously must feel he's in front or whatever because there's no big effort from him coming. Mickey's walking forward and he's doing his work. You know, not, not, a, particularly, not a particularly strong pace. Vasilev doesn't seem to be working at all, really. He's just not throwing shots at all. He just seems to be content to run. That. Can there be like a game plan behind it? Are they doing it for a purpose or is yeah. it? I mean, Vasilev may feel that he's far enough in, in front to enable to, to basically give this round away, not get stopped, not get knocked out, and he's going to win the fight. He may feel that he's in front with the knockdown. Um, Mickey is obviously on the front foot. I'd like to see a little bit more work rate for him. I'd like to see him force the issue a little bit more. But for me, he's winning the round on aggression. Vasilev's running away, trying to steal the round on the back foot. For me so far, the better work's come from Mickey. I mean, they're, 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 clearly, they're clearly tired. The pace has slowed a little bit, which it should do. I mean, they've been at this for nearly half an hour now, which is a long time. Uh, but to me, as I say, Vasilev seems content to just run away. So, so far for me, I'm giving a round to Mickey on the aggression, on the fact that he's the one forcing it. If Mickey wasn't throwing any, any punches at the moment, Vasilev having the occasional counter, little good left hand on the inside from Kovny on the way in there, just caught Vasilev on the chin. <laughs> Referee's giving it to Kovny. For me, Kovny nicked it. For me, Kovny nicked it. As I say, there was a couple of tight rounds earlier. It'd be interesting to see how the corner scored it, but well pleased for Mickey, as I say. As a, as a gym mate, I'm, I'm well pleased for him. He works hard. Vasilev can may, maybe be a tad disappointed. He was definitely in the fight. Um, he came here, he did a good job. He can be proud of himself. Certainly didn't get disgraced in any way. Almost won the fight in that seventh round with a knockdown, yeah, yeah. which. You know, maybe if he'd have picked his stuff a little bit better, he could have got Mickey out of there. Because for a few seconds yeah, yeah. there, he was definitely on unsteady legs. It was but a close fight, definitely. Yeah. Oh, all uh, in all, and the favourite was really in, the, in a lot of trouble there. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I mean, all in all, it was a cracking fight for me. Very tight. So it'd be interesting to see how the judges scored it. I've given it to Mickey by a round. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll have a listen up and we'll see. He's already put his hands up. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's, he's already raised so Mickey's up. Our main sponsor into the ring is the managing director of Lee Barron, Carl Wayman.
Ladies and gentlemen, your referee is the scores at 95 to your physical Brazilian and at 96 to the winner. And exactly Nicky the same Hogan. as me, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only international well, today we're over 30 years on, um, and our membership has grown to something like 18,000. I think it's over 18,000 people have joined. Um, we have an academy here, which um, we have kids from all the local schools. They come here, they, they take part in hairdressing, building, uh, bike maintenance, uh, acting, singing, dancing, and a wide range of other things. And, and also they take part in the actual boxing, which we teach them, and the weight training. So, And we've got people here who do kickboxing, karate, wrestling, professional boxing, amateur boxing, um, white collar boxing, we have um, weight training, weight lifting, circuit training, keep uh, the list goes on. And people who just come in and enjoy and treat it as their own community centre. We used to, we've always got help from the community, especially the locals themselves. Um, over the years, the painting, the decorating, the wiring, all sorts of things have just been done by people. We haven't had to pay for it. Local people who are in them trades come in and they give the bit of help. Um, it, that continues today, with, and it has continued with people who run the football clubs, people who run the amateur boxing clubs. So we're still getting support from the community. We enjoy putting promotions on, we have a bit of fun with it. Um, with the way the climate is with people, with money at the moment, we don't put on as many as we would like to, or we should do. We probably will do one, amateur to, uh, one or two amateur shows a year. Um, three or four pro shows a year, but other than that, at the moment, that's how we see ourselves, you know, going. We enjoy the sport. You never know. Tomorrow we may have a, a world beater here, and then that could take from the other direction.